Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GEM, the ECMWF, the GFS ensembles and we'll finish up having a look at the UK Met Office run as well. Now we've got a lot of high pressure around at the moment, you can see by the latest GFS snapshot, big high pressure around, however it does look like the amplified jet stream is going to be coming back in and in about seven days time it does look like we're going to be going pretty unsettled and reasonably cold as well, with a general air mass coming in from the Arctic. So do remember, if you enjoyed the videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and do remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So if we do have a look at the latest GFS, you can see at the moment, of course, we've got high pressure in control. But you can see over the next few days, it's going to slowly sort of edge away as low pressure starts to bring in, and we're going to see our first sort of hints of an arctic air mass you can see in from the north we're starting to get some chilly air the minus five degree line might move through at am 50 hpa towards northern scotland many other areas maybe getting down to the zero degree line but nothing too substantial and then we do get the real big application of the jet now if we go back to the pressure charts you can see um if you roughly follow this thicker black line which is generally where the jet stream is following see big amplification um, with high pressure up towards Greenland, diving southwards towards the Azores, and then coming up from the, uh, up from the south to northwards over the UK with this big low pressure out in the Atlantic. Now this will orig uh, sort of, um, originally bring up sort of warm, moist air up from the south, and does mean by sort of Saturday evening into Sunday, it's going to be going quite wet, windy, quite cloudy as well. Temperatures are going to be quite, uh, quite up. So overnight temperatures will be in the low teens, daytime temperatures, if we do see sunshine, we get, we get up to sort of the high teens, maybe even 20 degrees, but there will be a lot of showers, a lot of cloud around, so it'll be unlikely to be actually uh, pretty pleasant at all. Beyond that, that low pressure eventually does edge through, and as it does, we still have this high pressure up towards Greenland, and what it does, you can follow those isobars coming straight down from Svalbard, up in the Arctic Circle, with these northerly wind moving in, really quite chilly conditions um if we do have a look at the a 50 hp again minus five line moving through scotland not quite reaching south um sort of southwards as this low is sort of stretching out a little bit if we did get more of a direct northerly we would be seeing those cold temperatures sink even further southwards but pretty chilly over scotland you can't rule out a bit of snow maybe over the hills and some frosts as well and beyond that generally stay pretty chilly that cold air does try and spread southwards we put in a brief easterly wind before we do see that high pressure up towards Greenland break down and we see um, the big polar vortex, uh, tropospheric polar vortex take control. This is sort of pattern that if we did see this in sort of winter, winter time, we would say this is sort of the polar vortex of doom, basically where you get these dark blues, purple colours up, up towards Greenland, which basically means there is very little chance of the UK seeing anything too cold. Um, but it is right towards the end of the run. So again models do struggle with breaking down the blocking so we'll see, after what, see what happens sort of beyond day 10 but up until day 10 it does look like it's pretty blocked um but just beyond that we're seeing these dark purples return once again very cold air up towards greenland but of course to get to the uk it has to track the atlantic so um it does get warmed up substantially and generates these big lows so it, in this sort of scenario we could be going quite stormy so we'll have to keep an eye on what happens with that if we do have a look at the GM, see how that's compare out to day 10. Again, you can see the high pressure over the top of the UK at the moment. Um, and beyond that, uh, we see that brief northerly wind. And then that low, picking up warm moisture out in, the, out in the Atlantic. And then we generally see that northerly pattern with that high pressure blocking. Getting some cold air southwards, not quite as far southwards as we were seeing um, on... Uh, the GFS, but still some cold air sinking in, and if that cold air doesn't quite reach southern areas, what it will do is it will spin up these lows. Colder air feeding into warmer moist air from the south, that mix is going to make the weather fronts um, have bigger contrast, so likely to see heavier rain, um, more clouds, stronger winds as well. So this cold air not sinking far as far southwards probably is a bad thing if you don't like particularly stormy weather as that could fuel some of these lows to really deepen and we'll have to see in the shorter range what happens to these lows because they are going to fluctuate in position and in intensity over the run especially sort of day five day seven onwards um so we'll have to keep what happens with that but still very similar to the gfs in terms of having that shifted jet stream further southwards not quite getting that northerly wind in but still getting some cooler air sinking southwards 
You can see we're towards the end of the run. We do start to see those purple and blue colours migrate to our side of the pole. And they've generally been over the pole or the uh, or sort of the Russian and American side. Um, or Eastern Russians so or the Alaskan side, but they are shifting our way, and that could set up some more stormy weather towards the end of October and early November, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. If we do have a look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare, you can see again that cold air mass moving through later this week, and then we're going to see heavy rain starting to spread in through sort of Sunday and Monday, uh, maybe first arriving Saturday evening, and as that spreads through, we do eventually pull in a bit of a northerly wind on the back edge, some colder air sinking in, potentially the minus five getting through parts of northern Scotland, even get down to sort of central, um, sort of southern Scotland, northern England, um, so pretty chilly there, um, and it has got legs on it, it's quite a big area of cold air, so we'll have to keep, see, see, keep an eye on what happens with that, but dissimilar to the GFS and the GM, we are still seeing this blocking up towards Greenland, so not breaking it down anywhere as quickly as the GFS and GM, which um, it's very interesting to see that. Um, now remember, the ECMWF is probably the most accurate model um, in terms of what we see in reality, um, in sort of the 7 to 10 day forecast. So now it's not always right, but it's just generally um, it's more right than wrong compared to the GFS and the GM. Um, so, interesting seeing sort of the main model, um, or the most reliable model, let's just say, um, going for um, something a bit more blocked towards day 10 when the others are bringing in more of the tropospheric polar vortex and bringing in more westerly winds. So, we'll have to see really what happens with that in the longer term. Of course, as I said earlier in the video, the models do struggle with, block it, uh, with breaking down blocks and forecasting in the longer term simply because that's not a pattern we see often. Uh, we generally do have westerly winds quite often, so it's easier to forecast with that. So we'll have to keep an eye out on it, of course. So we do have a look at the GFS ensembles. Not much has really changed from yesterday. Still very up and down, unsettled and cold in the longer terms. At the moment, temperatures are rising slowly towards the end of the week before they drop on around, around, around about Friday, Saturday time, with that colder air mass coming in from the north. Then we see a big spike in upper air temperatures up towards 10 degrees area of THPA. It could be warm under that. However, low pressure is pushing in heavy rain, cloud and wind. Beyond that, as the temperatures do cool down as we start to put in a northwesterly wind, that northerly airflow um, with the colder polar maritime air mass, you do see temperatures drop to around or below average. Now for London, it's a bit more muddled, a bit more uncertainty, simply because with the lows moving in, we could be seeing warm fronts at times um, and sort of warm sectors. Um, so... Yeah, we'll have to see how these do resolve. I do suspect it will be a bit an up and down, but generally will be colder than average. A lot of precipitation, so it does look like it's going to be um, pretty unsettled um, with the rain around. And again, that's not too unusual for the end of October. So what we've had recently with quite a lot of dry weather, um, we have we've got to sort of count ourselves pretty lucky having seen that. If we have a look at the sea level pressure, you can see well reflected. Um, sort of the precipitation here you can see around 1030 millibars slowly decreasing to around 20 of october getting down to 1000 millibars low pressure and generally low pressure beyond that and that's what we'd expect with the precipitation charts we saw there and what we saw on the main sort of uh, operational runs with generally low pressure and control quite a bit of uncertainty of course in the longer term but it is looking generally low pressure dominated um into the longer term but still can change uh, as we saw by the east WF at day 10 um, not guaranteed to be seeing massive low pressures coming off the atlantic we could remain with a blocked pattern still would be low pressure but would be colder um, and more showery um, less of sort of big weather fronts moving in every 24 hours or so so we'll have to keep an eye of course on the longer term if we do have a look at glasgow to give us sort of uh, sort of to compare it to the north if we do have a look at the sea level pressure you can see, generally, high pressure at the moment, slowly dropping down to around 980, 990 millibars, um, quite low pressure, and staying below 1,010 millibars for the foreseeable future. Again, low pressure dominated, feeling pretty chilly under that, a lot of rain around, strong winds, um, not particularly present, but 
pretty autumnal, let's be honest. If we look at the 850 HP temperature and precipitation, you can see, again, similar to London over the next sort of week or so, temperature on the up at the moment, dropping quite chilly towards the end of this week. Could be some more precipitation over Scotland, simply because the cold front is stronger there, um, and this sort of the contrast. And then we see a pick up in temperatures as low pressure arrives, that big low sitting out the Atlantic slowly arrives, bringing its weather fronts for sort of Saturday night, Sunday, Monday. You can see a lot of rain with that, and that rain signal just continues all the way to the end of October. You can see more certainty on it being below average in terms of 850 HPA temperatures, simply because further north it's more likely to be on the cold side of the jet um, and of the low pressure systems with that sort of northerly airflow. You can see getting around zero degrees or lower than that potentially at 850 HPA, really quite chilly. Um, and yeah, um, it's going to be pretty autumnal, potentially, um, some would argue, a little bit miserable. Um, but at the same time, we're always going to be seeing this sort of conditions. Um, if we didn't see an autumn without um, quite unsettled, cold, miserable conditions, um, at least at times, um, we would have, we would be we sort of have to count ourselves really quite lucky. But um, it does look like we're going to be seeing that uh, stormy, um, if not just generally unsettled weather for the end or the last third, let's just say, of October. So we finished up having a look at the UK Met Office run, having a look at the next, what we're going to see over the next five days. You can see at the moment we have a few showers of Scotland, but they are pretty drizzly, light, and just generally just cloudy elsewhere. Sunshine around, feeling pretty decent um, in a few spots, but generally still quite a bit of cloud around. As we head into tomorrow, you can see weather front starting to head into Scotland. Not particularly heavy, but there could be some heavier pulse of rain within them um, and some lighter rain bit patchy but still weather front nonetheless as that cold rest sinks in from the north those weather fronts do slowly creep southwards but sort of disintegrate as they head southwards still potentially a line of heavier rain um, maybe overnight across uh, the midlands northern england uh, potentially um, eventually reach sort of clearing london area by sort of rush hour on friday potentially a bit of drizzly rain maybe some heavier pulses within it uh, at times but clearing away not being anything too substantial saturday is generally dry day initially for around mid-afternoon parts of ireland northern ireland wales southwest england and western scotland start to see heavy rain approach as the weather front of that big low out in the atlantic arrives and that clears through many areas overnight saturday um, and then by sort of Sunday evening, it does eventually clear away. Um, and by early hours of Monday, we're looking drier, but we'll have more showers and weather fronts approaching from the west. You can just see in the bottom corner here, more rain approaching as the unsettled weather does um, sort of start to really take off. If we do have a look at temperatures, um, you can see today temperatures got to around 16 17 degrees pretty decent to be honest and if you in a few spots nothing too cold um but over scotland a little bit chillier as we head through to thursday afternoon you can see temperatures potentially getting up towards 16 17 degrees in the south once again but you can see that chilly air starting to come in from the north a good five degree drop really you can see over the over sort of the north sea Sort of 9, 10 degrees uh, out towards the North Atlantic as well, 9, 10 degrees, whereas towards the south and the channel towards uh, sort of the Irish Sea, 15 degrees. So you see that big contrast in temperatures moving in. Um, and sort of by Friday, you can see cold air is really taking over in the north. Um, and sort of by Friday afternoon, you could be seeing 16, 17 degrees right across the south coast, but further northwards really struggling to low teens and across northern england and most of scotland struggling to get into double digits mostly in the mid to high single digits feeling pretty chilly then beyond that as we head into saturday um all areas are generally in the cooler air however warmer air is starting to approach from the southwest as we do have the approaching weather front so the cold air that does give us those cool temperatures at times really only does last around sort of 12 24 hours before the warmer air starts coming from the southwest so in the south it could be decent through saturday afternoon maybe 16 17 degrees ahead of the wetter weather moving in and that could bring um, a lot more cooler conditions as it does arrive and then beyond that into sunday um sunday again um maybe seeing 16, 17 across the south coast, but generally still chilly under rain um, and thicker clouds. So there could be some decent sort of weather out there at times, but it's generally 
for the longer term, looking quite unsettled, quite chilly, with a lot of rain around. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.